We are live. Let's see where we are. Are you sharing too, Kim? Mm -hmm. Have you done hip? Okay, I got hip, hipper, hey, Sumner. Got everybody but hip too for some reason. I'm sure it's fine. Okay, we are shared up. And Welcome everybody. We'll get started in just a second here. viewers. Kelly Tuttle says, hey, you two troopers. Hi, Kelly. That's fine. I'm tilted up a little bit there. You could just... I saw it. I, there's just a little <laughs> bit of it. I guess my volume's up. Oh, I know what it is. My phone is active. I'm going to make it inactive. You guys can start whenever you want. Hey Kelly, hey Lindsay, hey Mary, hey Josh, old friend, hi Frank, Linda, Josh Widow, yeah. he's been a dedicated watcher, thank you, Andy shared a tip yesterday, um, he is a local mail carrier, and if you need stamps, you don't have to go to the post office, your mail carrier likely has them with you, with them, and you can order them online and they'll deliver. Don't forget your mics. Oh, yeah. Somebody's volume is up. Huh? Oh, I'm hearing volume from it's the phone. Yeah. Now it's not mine. All right. Whenever you guys are ready. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Paige Brown here in uh, my office here at Galton City Hall. We have one person outside of our city government that comes in each day, and that's Kim, and she stays far away. It's Kim Baker, CEO of the Galton Chamber of Commerce. And we're joining you as we have each afternoon, although we may be scaling back in the days ahead. I think we've been told more than once that we're saying the same stuff a lot. We know that we are. And so we may scale back and just bring you some Facebook Lives when we think that there's something new that you may need. I do have a couple of things to share with you today. The first thing I'll start off on is probably not the bright light that we're all hoping for that will come soon, I promise. Not soon enough, but before the end of the, before the, end of the year, hopefully before the end of the month. Um, today I was watching the governor's press conference. They're looking for this to peak like the third week in April. It's a, it's a very dismal model for that time. Um, showing where we won't have enough hospital beds, we won't have enough ventilators, there'll be a lot of people that are sick. And I think um, both at the federal level and the state level, they're pleading with us to help turn that trajectory by doing the things that we all know we should be doing. I think as more and more people, unfortunately, 
realize that someone close to them is being touched by this virus, they may take it more seriously and make more efforts to protect themselves and those they love. Um, so this social distancing, this is going to be a new way of life. Um, I think hand sanitizer, which I used to just never use, I thought it would lower your resistance and I just never bothered to use it. It's going to be something we all use religiously and we're going to be very cognizant. I find myself when I go anywhere, I'm standing way far away from people and turning my head and, and trying not to be face to face with anyone if I can help it even in the grocery stores when you have to get there. Of course, most of them have sneeze guards down. I'm pleased with that. Um, have been getting updates today from several of the um, chain stores that are in our community. Corporate has been sending out their new measures to protect their employees and their patrons, which we appreciate those. I think if everyone keeps making these efforts, we will see where we can slow the spread of this disease and continue to have at least some level of an operating economy. So everybody, please keep doing your part. I know it's getting tiresome, it's getting tedious, but um, keep showing kindness and keep trying to do those things. Two things I want to share with you. One, the Legal Aid Society. I don't think we've seen it that much in our community yet, but I've heard in other communities where they're having kind of an increase in crime, particularly domestic violence. Um, it's hard when people are home together, and while I hope that no one would ever hurt the person they claim to love, I know it does happen. And um, there are other legal issues that you may need help assistance with. And the Legal Aid Society, though their offices are not open, they are answering calls. So if you need to call the Legal Aid Society and you need to get some help through them, you can give them a call at 615-451-1880. Probably started off on the wrong foot talking about that. If you do ever find yourself in some kind of situation in this community where you feel threatened, whether it be by someone you live with or someone in the community, do not hesitate to call 911 and get our police assistance. That's what they're there for, and it's always better to be safe than sorry. The other thing that I wanted to tell you about, and we have mentioned this before as well, but um, it's been a while, um, the need for blood. Um, because of COVID-19, people are not donating blood, and the routine need that exists in our country is still there. And those are patients who are undergoing cancer treatments, um, um, blood for people who are in accidents or other trauma accidents. So there are people there that need blood, but no one's donating because of the virus. So please, if you are able, if you are an able donor, please consider donating blood. We have opportunities every Thursday for the next several weeks from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. at the Gallatin Civic Center. You don't even have to... Um, Go and stand in line or wait. You can actually register online at redcrossblood.org. I believe they'll set you an appointment time, and that's when you'll come in. So the hours are 11 to 4, starting tomorrow, April 2nd, then on April 9th, April 16th, April 30th, May 6th, and May 13th. So I think that is a bit about all I have today. Kim, what have you got new over in your world? A couple of new things that are going on. I think yesterday we mentioned the potential of a prayer parade happening, and we did finalize that today. It was a, a community member named Cheryl Duffy who brought us the idea. We were able to work with Sumner Regional and our police department to get that organized, and I've actually been in touch with most of the churches today. And I think we're probably going to have a large parade tomorrow. So I think that'll be exciting. The way that'll work is folks will line up um, behind the hospital, um, 1030 to 1045. We've got that information with all of the details on our Facebook page, on the Chambers page. So I would ask that you look there. And at 11, the parade will take off. And we're asking that no one get out of their cars. Everyone carpool only with people that they live with. This is not a time to grab all your friends in one vehicle. Um, if you want to make signs or honk your horn or have music playing, that's certainly acceptable. Some regional sta staff will, um, those that are available, will kind of retreat to a window so they can look out and see you all waving and showing that support. So mm -hmm. then it'll leave from there and go on to Sumner Station mm -hmm. to show them some support as well. So I think that's really yeah, great. So, so this is a safe way for the community to extend their love and thanks to the staff at Sumner Regional Medical Center who have had a particularly hard past week and know that they have several weeks still to go of some trying times. So anything we can do to show our appreciation and support for them, I know that they will feel that, and hopefully it will bolster them so that they can press on and keep taking care of people in our community because they do something that most of us are not trained or able to do. So it's 
very, very important and that we continue to support them. What else? Um, two other things. One, um, I know we've heard a lot about people making masks and face shields and other PPE. And there's actually a group that stem from some folks in Gallatin. Um, they have launched a website and they have officially named themselves the C-19 Liberators, inspired by one of their team members' fathers who has compared this um, to the FP-45 Liberator from World War II. And they actually dropped me off a sample. Um, and it's kind of a community effort. So this is the face shield they are making. And um, there's a strap that goes along the back that gets put on. But some of our manufacturing facilities um, have actually partnered with them. RC10 is cutting out and punching the holes in the plastic. And um, um, it starts with an N. Um, Norbrico. Is that right? Nabrico. Nabrico. Nabrico is helping them with 3D printers. And so they're having to 3D print some of these supplies. And um, then there's some, been some other folks that have help, been helping them get all of that out. And I think they're getting interviewed this evening by a local media channel. So that I think you can watch and learn more tonight on Channel 5. Um, but I think that's really neat. And there's certainly ways to support them. I think you can contribute to their costs and pitch in with their efforts on their website. So... That's C-19. tremendous. I mean, there is so much good in the community. There's an old movie, probably no one has seen it except me, but it's one I actually love. It's called Things We Lost in the Fire. And the man who's one of the main characters in there, he has lots of challenges in life, but he always tells the people around him, you go go with the good, go with the good. And that was just kind of his way to keep himself focused on the good people and the good things happening. And that's what I keep thinking about when I think about oh, this is so hard. I think about all the good, like what they're doing and what some of the individuals in our communities are doing and what other businesses are doing and what our healthcare workers are doing and what our paramedics and EMTs and firefighters and police officers and chamber ladies are all doing. Um, and there's so much good. And so I, I would encourage you all to, to go with the good and try and keep your focus off the bad right now because we're going we're gonna to be dealing with this for a while and we cannot let it, defeat us and and i've said what i said yesterday several times today we are not each other's enemy the virus is our enemy so let's work together against it and not let it change how we're acting towards each other i agree with that i like the go with the good one other thing i wanted to add and this is a statewide effort but the tennessee chamber of commerce and industry just launched the tennessee creators respond and it is basically a network and a portal where local state manufacturing facilities can go to say, hey, we can help manufacture this type of PPE. And they can put all of that on there. Healthcare providers can go on there and request their needs. And then the state chamber is working to pair them. So I think that's really neat and a statewide effort. And let me speak before we say goodbye today to all the people who are out there trying to get in touch with the state for unemployment benefits. I know that you're probably about ready to burn down some phone lines because you're not getting through. Today, I was on a conference call with the White House, and they understand that that is going on in states across the country because they're having, obviously, record number of filings for unemployment. But they are working now and hope to have it out within the next few days, new portals for every state to be able to use to help their citizens get their unemployment benefits started sooner. So please stay patient. Um, actually have a, a man in the office right now that used to work for the Department of Labor, and there are not a lot of people, according him, to him, working in that office that can mm-hmm. actually answer your calls. And no one was prepared, uh, expectedly, no one was pre- prepared for this kind of scale up. So um, please be patient. Know that they will come, and, and the federal government is working to help the states in that effort, and hopefully we'll see um, some return on that soon. Um, In general, the rest of the call with the White House was um, about the various pots of money that are going here and there and who they're going to who, uh, who's going to, what's going to whom and how they may be used. Um, It was a lot of guidance for local municipalities. Um, Generally, the federal funds, the only ones that are going directly to the big cities are for cities over 500,000. Obviously, we don't qualify. But um, there is relief going to states that should, in some ways, trickle down to local governments. And certainly you're well aware of the benefits for individuals and small businesses. And they really are some tremendous opportunities. Remember, SBA.gov is the place to go and learn about the small business loans, some of which, like the payroll loans, could be forgiven in the future. 
And then um, for individuals, there's actually some of the individual links on coronavirus.gov, they said. There's actually the jobs information for like self-employed, independent contractors and the like on that website. I've been on the phone all day. I've not verified that because this is the first time I'd heard that that information was on that page. So coronavirus.gov and sba.gov. It's so. yeah, it's all there. Mm-hmm. And I would say too if you are a business or another or an individual looking to apply for all of those, go ahead and start that process now because it could take a little while. Mm-hmm. And I've heard several people to say that they're waiting on um, they've got notification that they're waiting on the employer to respond. Um, that's why uh, we were giving guidance that if employers can actually file for their employees, that helps both of you because then they're not having to respond to each request from the state and um, helps expedite faster, helps the state as well. So if you're an employer with several employees who are being laid off, if you can help with that, that would certainly save everyone some time and effort in the process. And if not, um, I'm sure you're I'm hopeful that your employee will a- employer will actually help get that through as quickly as possible for you because I know it's a difficult time. So we love you. Yeah, we love you. And we appreciate y'all being kind to us and saying all the nice things you've been saying. And yes, I know I look tired, but I'm healthy. Don't worry. <laughs> um, it's, just, it's just been a busy several days, but um, we're, we're still here. We're still plugging on, trying to get things done, take care of people. Um, dealing with issues in our community, dealing with people hurting from coronavirus and wishing this blasted thing would go away. So let's help each other make it go away. And take care of yourself till we see you next time. Bye. Bye.